Hello everyone, Murray Hallam here again and I'm just happy to say that I'm here in a farm at a farm outside of Bangalore in India and it's a holistic farm. That's what I find fascinating about this place. Obviously, I'm going to show you an aquaponics facility, but I want you to look behind me and around me. They've got rice growing, they've got tomatoes growing, they've got chilies growing outside. It's, it's an organic farm in its own right before it even starts to do um, aquaponics and it's just the most wonderful facility. In fact, I venture to say it's one of the best I've seen for a very, very long time. So just have a look at the expanse of this beautiful greenhouse. It's been up here about, I think about six or nine months now it's been in operation and they're in full swing. They're selling vegetables all around Bangalore to the top class hotels and all those kind of places are getting produce out of this farm. And here's the name, Madhavi Farms in Bangalore in India. And uh, it's 100% organic, non-GMO produce. And they can say that without any fear of contradiction because they've been very, very se severe and very, very um, uh, intense about making sure the rest of their farm is totally organic. And obviously they wanted to do something high production that was modern day. And they found that the only thing that fitted the bill was aquaponics. So here we are. So come on inside with me and we'll have a look around. Wow, we've got here a airlock and this is to um, keep insects out I'm sure and we have a foot wash here. Now that's really good practice. And this foot wash is water with chlorine in it to make sure we don't bring any pathogens or, or rubbish into this beautiful greenhouse. And hey, just look at it. Look at the expanse of this place. Absolutely wonderful. We've got people down here harvesting, all sorts of things happening. So let's go a bit further in and have a look. I'm walking past the uh, advanced seedling area that goes in here and here's something really interesting, a reverse osmosis plant that they use for top up water. Isn't that incredible? Look at that, all the latest machinery. And we come along here and what do we have here? The control panel for the um, solar panels. They've got a, over 100 kVA of solar running this farm and look at this up to the date modern um, installation. We have here the uh, packaging area and also makeshift office where this stuff is packaged. Now you might be thinking, why aren't we seeing some of that? Well, the packaging has already been done today. The stuff has already been delivered. This farm is what, almost four months old, that's all. And they've also um, been really planting up new stuff here just today and stuff's going out everywhere. Let's carry on looking and see the fish tanks and all that kind of thing. Here we've got fish tanks. Now they've just been turned on again. They were turned off a few minutes ago to do some maintenance, but they're on again, all running on solar power and they're all stocked with koi fish. You see the water coming in here. Here we've got our traditional stuff that is all part of our standard methodology that we do. We've got a distribution tank or sometimes we call it a header tank. We've got a mineralization tank. We've got media beds. Look at them all planted up with beautiful beans. They're gonna be climbing beans obviously because of this. In front of me there, we've got the seedling raising area. It's all here. If we go further down in the farm. We just see this modulism as repeated over and over again. We've got a beautiful big pump here. We're told by the owner that he's got Grunfoss pumps. They are the best. He's tried several in just a few months. They've been in operation and these ones are very quiet. They're, I'm right beside it, hear that? Very quiet running pump. Below that, we've got a massive sump that's buried in the ground. Um, Grand Central Station, as we always call it. And there it is. Come with me, we'll go have a bit, bit, bit further down. We'll look at some filters and some things like that. So walking past some of the equipment, look at this, a good old fashioned zapper to uh, kill any insects that might have gotten in here, the flying around. And let's take a look at the filtration. Here it is right here. I'm standing right now in front of a good old fashioned swirl filter. We could also call it a settlement tank or we could call it a clarifier. But in this case, we like to call it a swirl filter. There it is there, nice fiberglass lid on it. Um, the next process for the water goes directly into this here. And this is a, a good old fashioned up down filter that you'll see in many a aquaculture farm. And then finally it goes through this biofiltration. This is a moving bed biofilter. You see all the media in here, it's, it's in the water, lots of aeration. So we're just making sure that there's plenty of aeration and plenty of uh, biofiltration. But I've got to point out to you, over there we've got loads of media beds which also give us fantastic biofiltration. And that is the process of converting ammonia right through to nitrates that the plants use. 
And here we have on this particular module, it's working a second swirl filter to handle the amount of volume that's going through this fish tank. So there's two of them doing this job. So that's amazing and really good. And it all goes through this, of course. Then it goes down through and off to all these raft beds, as you can see over here, they've got the plants in them. Uh, on the raft beds here, we've got aeration lines. I'll just tap my foot on it. That's an air inlet. You can see the sign on there. And there's the air for all these rafts going along both sides of the system, providing beautiful aeration into these rafts. Got to have aeration. Everywhere you look, there has to be aeration. Here we've got a perfect example because this bed has got some of the rafts taken off it. And you can see the vigorous aeration that's going on in these raft beds. And once again, look at it, staggered through the bed. Lots of great aeration going on. And look at these beautiful air stones on the bottom of this that's bringing all this aeration on. Look at that, straightforward, beautiful, high quality air stones. Now I can tell you, these come from the USA. They're the best quality air stones you can possibly get. You can reuse them, clean them and carry on with them. So that's a good thing to do. So we're getting lots of aeration. See it coming out there? Beautiful, beautiful, all the way along. Loads of aeration in each raft. Do you realise there are people in the USA in particular who claim themselves to be aquaponics experts who are telling people that you don't have to aerate your rafts? Well, I can tell you that's just a load of rubbish. Don't fall into that trap, whatever you do. The plants must have oxygen around their roots. Very, very important. And you can see the wonderful example of it happening right here. This farm is broken into five modules, five independent aquaponic systems working in this great big greenhouse. And you can see them quite clearly. You see the overhead tank, the header tank or the water distribution tanks. You can see them as we go down there, two, three, four, five. So the, the farm is broken up into these areas. Now it's a smart idea when you design your farm to modularize because should you have something go wrong, I can't imagine what, but just imagine something goes wrong in one module, you've only got a problem in one module. You haven't got a problem in the entire farm. And that's why we modularize and make sure we're running systems like that. It's a real joy to me to see this wonderful farm. Look what we've got, we've got expanses of beautiful, totally healthy kale. We've got all this Swiss chard of different kinds, you know, the coloured one, rainbow Swiss chard. On this side, more kale. The further down we look, we've got bok choy, we've got more kale, we've got more Swiss chard, we've got lettuce, we've got tomatoes growing over there. Uh, in here, we've got cucumber starting up. Uh, and remember, I want to point out to you, this is a working farm. They didn't do this just to have it ready for us to be here to film. It's a working farm. This morning they harvested, they delivered to hotels and shops in the area and uh, the tomatoes are coming on. It's a working farm. That's why we've got some areas that aren't planted because they were harvested out just a few days ago. Wonderful, I just love to see this. And it's all working and it's all following the methodology we've been teaching for years and that is chop two or split delivery. There's lots of ways you can describe it but we have loops in our system. And in our lessons, you'll see how we teach, how you to regulate that and come up with the correct flows of water through the system so that everything in the system is taken care of. The owner of the farm, we were having a chat this morning on the way to the farm actually, and we were addressing the problem of how do you make a farm like this pay in a place like India, where there's so many poor people. And he was telling us that peasant farmers here in the um, growing season, they grow tomatoes and they sell them for an equivalent of about 10 cents Australian per kilo. That would be, in American terms, 5 cents a pound for tomatoes. How can you possibly compete with that? Well, obviously you can't on price. So you have to be organic, you have to show that what you're growing is high quality, and you have to start growing exotic species that ordinary farmers can't grow in the field very easily, such as kale and aromatic plants. This this particular farmer is into aromatics a lot and he's growing various kinds of mints he's got going on here where he can make aromatics for menthol production and things like that. So in your area, you need to find what you can leverage to be able to get a high price for what you grow. Don't try and compete on price because this farm is a good example of an actual working farm that is competing against ridiculous prices like 10 cents a kilo for tomatoes. Impossible to try and beat that. 
So you have to be better at what you do. You have to grow organic plants and you have to seek out those markets that are prepared to pay for quality produce. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm.